If you're going to be executed, you'd probably want the process to be relatively quick and painless. Be it one fell swoop from the guillotine, a short drop and a sudden stop, or just getting injected with night night juice. But sometimes, things don't go according to plan. So let's see how it all went wrong for a few poor unfortunate souls. If you're getting your melon chopped off, you're going to want two things. A sharp blade and a trained executioner. Poor Margaret Pohl got maybe one of those. Once the very wealthy Countess of Salisbury, not the stake, Margaret fell from the good graces of King Henry VIII when she went all girl boss on him for divorcing his first wife, Catherine of Aragorn. Henry brushed this off, but was set over the edge when Margaret's very influential Catholic cardinal son, Reginald Pohl, also scolded him, but from a safe distance over in Italy. Hey Henry, you suck! The proud Protestant king responded, being all, all right, bet and imprisoned Margaret, Reginald, and the rest of her family in the Tower of London. That'll teach you. Margaret was held for two and a half years in the Tower in actually pretty fair conditions, with her own personal servants and lavish clothing. Until one morning when she got a surprise visitor. <laughs> hey, Margaret, how's it going? You look great, by the way. I love that dress. So listen, um, yeah, you're, uh, you're going to be executed today. Okay, bye! <laughs> that morning on May 27th, 1541, Margaret was led to a courtyard to have her dome knocked off. Unfortunately for her, the main executioner had been sent away to fight some rebels, so his intern filled in. Generally, executions are supposed to be swift and smooth. Not this one. The inexperienced executioner couldn't chop worth shit, so he ended up just hacking Margaret's back and neck to bits. Oops. 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 It took 11 swings to finally detach head from body. Now, if you're going to be executed, you might as well have done something pretty cool to deserve it. Take Robert Francois Damier, for example. As a very French man, he hated his very French king, King Louis XV, because reasons. Well, in 1757, he decided to channel that hatred into something productive, like developing an elaborate plan to kill the king. As the Merry Monarch was entering his carriage at the Palace of Versailles, Damier mashed the A button to rush past the bodyguards and stab the king with a pen knife. <laughs> Fortunately for King Louis, his thick-ass royal king coat was thick enough to stop the pen from doing any severe damage, and the pen only penetrated less than half of an inch into his chest, causing nothing but a flesh wound. Damier was immediately arrested, convicted, and sentenced to be drawn and quartered by horses. Now, if you're unfamiliar with such an execution method, it's exactly as it sounds. No, 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 not that. There we go. A rope is tied around each limb and strapped to a horse. Four limbs, four horses. They then pull in opposite directions until your limbs pop out of their sockets one by one. Real fun stuff. Well, that's how it's supposed to go. Reportedly, Damier had stubborn anatomy that just refused to separate at all. So to make things a little bit easier, his arms and legs had their tendons cut to make the ripping easier. After his last limb detached, he was reported to have still been alive. So his stumpy, bloody torso was burned to finish the job. Bit overkill for a little scratch with a pen knife, but whatever. Thomas Ketchum, who has no relation to the world-famous Pokemon trainer, was an infamous American outlaw who would give Arthur Morgan a run for his money. Quack, quack! Ketchum, also known as Black Jack, had his own posse of cowboys for some rootin', tootin', robbin', and shootin'. Ketchum and his gang terrorized the Wild West in the late 1800s with a string of shootouts, robberies, murders, but they had bigger ambitions with heftier payouts. That's when Tom decided to go for gold. Literal gold. On trains. He... He, he was, he was going to rob trains. With his brother Sam at his side, the two robbed trains to the tune of a modern-day equivalent of a few million dollars over the years. But eventually, their luck ran out. On a solo run, Sam was injured in a shootout, arrested, and died of an infection of his wounds a few days later. Tom, unaware that his brother just bit the dust robbing a train, made an attempt on the very same train just a month later. At this point, the train conductor's a little sick of getting robbed, so he pulled an Uno reverse card on Tom, using a shotgun to blast away his elbow. The train chugged away and Tom was left injured on the wayside where he was later arrested by law enforcement. 
For his countless crimes over the years, Tom was sentenced to death by hanging. Unfortunately for Tom though, the small New Mexico town had no experience actually hanging a man, so they did the best they could. Gallows? Check. Prisoner? Check. Length of hanging rope? Uh, I don't know. The gallows were tested with a 200 pound sack of flour, which seemed to have been successful. But the problem here is that the same rope that was tested was reused for the execution, so that 200 pound sack made the rope really tight. Since Tom was notorious at this point, crowds flocked to witness his execution. On April 26, 1901, the rope was placed around Tom's neck and the trapdoor was sprung. <laughs> The townsfolk ended up getting way more than they bargained for. The long, tight rope instantly decapitated Tom once he reached the apex of his final descent. He should have quit, but now he's just ahead. <laughs> but at least he made a cool postcard. Hey, quick side note here. So I'm realizing that there's like no image resources for this section, so I hope you don't mind some crude artwork. King Cal Lorso, uh, uh, GL, was the second woman in Thai history to be put to death by gunfire. Being a nanny to the six-year-old son of a wealthy business family, she was promptly fired because... But that didn't sit too well with her. In a desperate attempt to get some money, she, along with several accomplices, had kidnapped the six-year-old for ransom. They had demanded 200,000 Thai baht, or $6,000, for the release of the boy. After the terrified family failed to follow the exact directions of where to bring the ransom money, the young boy was brutally beaten and buried alive. GL had attempted to save the boy with whom she had grown fond of, but failed to do so. GL and her accomplices were quickly arrested and sentenced to death by firing squad. Now, Thailand did firing squads a bit different from what you'd expect. Instead of lining a blindfolded prisoner to a wall with several gunmen taking aim, the prisoner is instead tied facing backward on a wooden cross. A concealing screen is put up with a target pointing in the vicinity of the prisoner's heart, and a rifle is lined up to the target. A single executioner is instructed to fire up to 15 shots at the target, guaranteeing the prisoner's death. On January 13, 1979, GL was executed and carted off to the morgue, and all seemed to have been successful. But that thought quickly evaporated once GL was found screaming her freaking head off in the morgue and attempting to stand up. But why wasn't the execution successful, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you if you just wait a minute. Jeez. It turns out that GL's genetics played a prank on her. She was diagnosed with situs inversus, meaning that all of her organs were mirrored to how they normally should be, with her heart on her right side of her chest rather than her left. So those initial shots all missed her heart entirely and instead of killing her, just ended up hurting a lot. She was instantly pulled from the morgue, set up once more on the cross and given another volley of justice seeds to the back. When it comes to new inventions, they usually go through rigorous testing and tweaks to perfect their function before being put on the market for commercial use. Well, since the electric chair wasn't a commercial product, who cares? Improvements can be made later on once enough um, testing is performed. William Kemmler was such a test subject. A poor businessman and a drunk, Kemmler often found himself in trouble. According to an article in the New York Times, on March 29th, 1889, Kemmler was recovering from a drinking binge the night before when he became enraged with his wife, Tilly Ziegler. He accused her of stealing from him and preparing to run away with a friend of his. When the argument had reached a peak, Kemmler calmly went to the barn out back, grabbed a hatchet, and returned to the house. He struck Tilly repeatedly, killing her. He then went to a neighbor's house and announced that he had just murdered his wife. Kemmler was arrested, swiftly convicted of first degree murder, and sentenced to be executed by a brand new invention. On August 6th, 1890, Kemmler was brought to the chair. He reportedly did not resist in any way and willingly accepted his punishment. After being secured and wishing everyone farewell, the switch was thrown. 1,000 volts were put through Kemmler's body for 17 agonizing seconds. Kemmler was unconscious, but alive. The voltage was doubled and power was thrown again. This is where things became spectacular. It was reported by witnesses that Kemmler's blood vessels ruptured and bled under his skin and his entire body caught fire. The entire execution room filled with the foul odor of burning flesh, causing many witnesses to panic and flee. The execution lasted eight terrifying minutes. An autopsy showed that Kemmler's skull had burnt to a crisp and his brain cooked to a tender medium rare. It looks stunning. The New York Times later published a review stating that the executioner would have done better with an axe. 
So there you have it. Sometimes plans don't go according to plan. So make sure to always cut twice and measure once. If your morbid curiosity hasn't been satisfied enough, why not check this out? I'll see you there.